Hello, welcome back to Soul Adventures. My name is Livy, and I'm here yet again with another Solitaire BGG Print and Play Contest game review. So today the game that we're going to be looking at is Conquest Fall Blau, a card-driven war game. So as usual, if you're not interested in watching me play this game, then feel free to skip to the end to hear my final thoughts. Otherwise, let's venture forth. Setting up for a game of Conquest Fall Blau is pretty simple. We just put out our trackers and set everything at zero, except for the supply depot, which is at five. And now we have a lovely selection of five Nazis we can choose from. Unfortunately, we can only pick three of them. So I have decided to form my posse, I guess, with these guys. General Hoth, General von Salmut, and General Kleist. So their strength is represented by the cubes on the card. So he has four, he has six, and he also has four. And this shows that these are tank military, and this is just a normal military unit. This will come into effect a little bit later, but we don't need to worry about it right now. And then we just need to put out our first card in our um, campaign campaign line or campaign queue. And then we can get started. So the first thing we do on our turn is we advance the time. It is now early July 1942. And now I can take various actions with my generals. So if we want to attack our enemy, first we have to approach them. So I think von Salmut is going to advance, and I'm going to show that he's uh, been exhausted by turning him sideways. So the campaign card is now in front of him. It cost one supplies, though, to advance. And he's done now for the round. We see here that there are three red cubes and these represent Russians. Do you get it? They're red. And uh, we need to defeat these in order to win this campaign card. So I'm going to say that General Kleist is going to attack. Now he isn't straight in front of this card, so he can only attack with half of his strength, rounded up. So it's two, but if he had five, it would be three. So this is the number of dice we can attack with. He got a 5 and a 2. A 3 or higher is a success. So we defeated one Russian unit, and he's exhausted. And now Hoth also can only attack at half strength. Two threes. So bingo. There we go. Now this campaign card is ours, and you can see at the bottom it says that it unlocks Rostov and Voroshilograv. I'm sorry, I don't speak Russian, and I'm probably going to say everything completely wrong this whole video, so <laughs> please be patient with me. Oh, this, this is the event deck. Blah. So we need to go through the campaign deck and find Rostov. And Vorshilograd. And these are in the campaign queue. So that is the end of our turn. We advance the time. We reset our generals. And we draw two event cards. Oh, I forgot we beat this one. So we get one victory point, or Siegpunkte in German, which seems fitting for this game. So both of these cards are not great. I have to play them both immediately. So event cards are usually helpful, but this is not helpful. We need to launch two major counterattacks. So it says play immediately and keep these in play. I will put them here. We play them just like any normal campaign card. says, place this card on the front line as if it were a campaign card with 1d3 uh, Yes, 1d3 enemies. So 2, that means it's a 1. And then this 
this one. Three, that means it is two. And immediately counterattack. So they're immediately going to roll dice. They roll one at half, and it's a four. Um, they only succeed on a one. And these guys will roll two. And they got a six and a one, so we were defeated. So it says, ignore the first one rolled when making any type of Soviet, Soviet counterattack against von Zalmut. So I don't lose a guy. So we're okay. After the event phase, we need to decide what we're going to do. So these guys clearly cannot stay there. I am going to attack with Hoff. Uses one unit of supplies. He can attack with full strength, though. So he has a special ability called Panzertruppen, which means that when he rolls a six, he can remove two units instead of one. But all of these were successes, so he did amazing. Von Zalmut is also going to attack now with his full strength. Okay, so we can ignore... So we cannot ignore this one because we rolled it ourselves, so we lose one unit. Two failures and three success. So we got both of these. Since Kleist doesn't have anybody to attack right now, I'm just going to have him advance. So that costs one unit. No, actually, no, he's going to consolidate. So I'm going to tap him there and he gets two supplies and he would have gotten one unit if he had been missing any. So these two event cards are now ours. We have a total of three victory points. Okay, so we reset our guys, we advance the time, now it is late July 1942, and we draw events. Luftwaffe support and Italian infantry corps. So I can play this to gain a unit, or I can attack any campaign card with two extra black dice, or gain some supplies. So these are both very useful. I will keep them. So first I will have Zalmut advance, and that costs one supply. Voro Shilograd has one D3 plus one Russians. So three. What the heck, I'm going to have Kleist also advance. So that's one supply. And there are three Russians here. This guy here doesn't have an enemy in front of him, but I'm still going to have him attack. Two failures. Okay, so now it's time for a pretty massive counterattack. So we roll for the Russians. Um, we rolled 1-1, one, one, but he's allowed to ignore the first one, so that's good. And we'll roll for him. Two ones. He does not have any um, invulnerability there, so he loses two of his units. That is a lot. So we reset our guys, advance the time. And it says here, cautious, at the beginning of each turn when starting a new month, so early on the operational calendar, draw an extra event card and discard any one event card of your choice. So that means I can draw three. Um, so I have to play this bad weather card. And I think I'm going to keep this allies card.
So play immediately. Bad weather. Exhaust a general of the player's choosing. So I'm going to exhaust Hoth. Hmm. Zalmut is going to attack. Four successes, so that was easy peasy. We unlock Kalak. And now Kleist will do his best. I think we're going to need some Luftwaffe support, so we get to add in two additional dice to help us attack. Ooh, one failure and two successes. So the Russians counterattack. Four were all right. Advance the time, reset our dudes, and do the events. 22nd Panzer Division, or, Oh, partisans, we have to play them immediately. Destroy a unit from any general or roll a die, and on a one, two, three, you lose two supplies, or on a four to six, you lose one. So, I don't want to lose any of my units. I'm going to roll, and I rolled a five, so we only lose one supply. We're getting pretty low in supplies, though, so I think we're going to have to start regrouping. I'm going to have... Kleist is going to consolidate, and that will give us two more supplies and one more unit. Zalmud will attack, so that costs us supplies. And we lost one unit. And killed four, so we're... Ooh, but I could only... Oh, I did that wrong. I forgot, he can only roll at half of his strength. So he could only roll two dice. I'm just going to roll that again. Two failures. I still lost my guy and I didn't hit them, so that's that. And Hoth is also going to consolidate because he can't... Or wait, nope, nope, he's advancing. And that costs one supply. One, two, three, four, five. So time passes. Reset. Forgot these guys get to counterattack. The Russians will take five shots at Hoth. And no successes. So now it's the beginning of another month. So it's early September. So we get to draw an additional three cards. And get rid of one. So the intelligence coup will reveal the next three cards from the top of the event deck. The player may choose to discard any or all of them, or the player may place any or all of them back on top of the event deck. I want this one. And Blitzkrieg, play this card to ready an exhausted general. So that's good. I'll get rid of the other Blitzkrieg. I'm just going to spend intelligence right now. Dora Railgun, some Romanian allies, and Sturmgeschutz BTNs. These are all good, I guess. So, I'll just put them back. Ooh, I'm running low on supplies here. This is not good. Zalmut is going to consolidate. 
uh, Hoff. Let's see what you can do. So I can play this card during an attack and gain an additional three dice. And it has the Panzertruppen rule. So I already have Panzertruppen, but I'll just do it. So that would kill two units, or four units. And we have two more successes here. And two failures, and we lose one of our units. This card unlocks Stalingrad Outskirts and Kotlinikovo. Okay. And Kleist will attack Rostov. Fail. And success. And this one unlocks Mykop and Novorossovsk. And we advance our victory points. So we have a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We should have 8 now. So we pass the 7 mark. And now we land on 8. We don't have any active campaign cards though, so we don't have to put in any reinforcements. And this guy consolidated. There we go. So we have lots of options about where we want to go next. Advance the time. And do the events. I want Kleist to get two of his units back. So I'll, I'll spend these two. Romanian allies in the Dora Railgun. So both are good. This one's in color. If I'm not wrong, I think most of these pictures are not in color. It's interesting. I can attack any fortress campaign card with uh, two extra black dice and ignore any black dice modifiers. So, Zalmut advances to Kortolinikovo. And there's 1d3 Russians, so just one. Kleist can also advance. No, I'm going to consolidate him. Hoth, however, will advance. Okay, he's consolidating and counterattack. Nope. And nope. Advance the time. So I'm going to have Kleist is going to advance. One D three Russians plus one. Three four four Russians. Oop. Hoth will attack. And three successes. We are a total death machine. Unlock Stalingrad Industrial District and Mamayafev Kurgan. So we get an additional point. And these are the two new locations. Zalmut will just take out this one. We lose a unit, 
but was otherwise decimated. And this unlocks Alista. One more Siegpunkte. Getting pretty down here in the deck, actually. There's not that many cards left. And the Russians attack. And nope. It's the beginning of October, so we can draw three event cards this turn if we want. Mm, first I'm going to spend this one. Luftwaffe support, Sturmgeschütz or General Feldmarschall Richthofen. So I can keep him in play. When the card is in play, the player may re-roll any Luftwaffe support card roll, whether it be an attack roll or a supply roll. So I guess he's just hanging out here now. I'm going to get rid of the Sturmgeschütz. So I can pay one supply to reorganize my generals if I wanted. I'm not sure that would do me a lot of good at this point. So we'll have Kleist attack the Russians. However, this is in the mountains, so that means we take a minus one to attack and we lose a unit on a one or a two. So we lost a unit. But we have Panzertruppen, so these two guys and these two guys. Stavropol. Two more points. Two more reinforcements. Thankfully, we don't have any. Zamut will consolidate. And Hoth will advance. Stop or pull. So on this card it says if my cop is not captured then you have to add an additional Soviet unit to this one. Um, but we have my cop, I believe. Yes, yes we do. So we're okay. So that's four units. And they will attack. Uh, since it's the mountains uh, and they rolled a two, they take one of our guys. And time passes. Bad weather, play immediately, exhaust a general of the player's choosing. I will exhaust Kleist. And Pioneer BTNS. Play this card to gain a unit or play the card during an attack order and reroll up to two dice when attacking a fortress. So I'm going to play Blitzkrieg and unexhaust him and he will advance on Elista. And there is 1d3 Russians. Special rules. Attack orders made against this card cost an extra supply. So this is expensive to attack. Hoth is going to attack Stavropol. Three success. Zalmut has five, so therefore he can attack with three, and he will attack there. And easily takes them out. Unlocks Grozny. So we get an extra point. Grozny. Grozny. 
be fresh, advance time, and do events. General Zukov, play immediately and keep it in play. So while Zukov is in play, all local and major counterattacks reroll rolls of six. So a Russian general is now at play and makes our life a little bit more difficult. But we also get some tank support, so that's that's cool. I am going to have Kleist consolidate, so he will gain two supplies and a dude. Zalmut will attack with half of his strength. Um, that's two success. Unlocks Astrakhan. It's another point. Would have reinforced here, but we don't have any campaign cards in play. Astrakhan. And Hoth. Hmm. Let's advance. One D three plus one, so that's two Soviet forces. Once this card is captured, gain one D three supplies. So these will attack. No success. Time advances. Mm, play this card to fill that up. We can draw three. General Chukov. While Chukov is in play, the player may not use any Luftwaffe support or door rail guns to attack any Stalingrad campaign cards. So that's not good. Also, play immediately. Soviet air offensive. If the player has any Luftwaffe support cards in hand, he may discard one to ignore this attack. This one-time attack targets a general like a major counterattack. Roll three d6s, and each roll of one or two destroys one of the general's uh, military. So I'm going to spend my Luftwaffe. Interference from OKH. Exhausted general of the player's choosing. So I will have Hoth attack. And he loses two units. This is a fortress city, so it's also at minus one. So this was a failure. And this was the only success. And von Salmut. Loses a dude, has two successes. Unlocks Stravropol. Didn't we already have that one? Yeah, I think we already have that one in play. It's another two points. We're at 16 points and we need to have at least 25 <laughs> within the next couple of rounds or we lose. That's that. We refresh our guys advance our time, and this is our last turn. So I'm gonna have Zalmut try Grozny. And that advances, it has four. Then Kleist will attack with the Panzer Division. So Kleist now is going to attack with the aid of the Panzer Division. Um, he is adjacent, so that's normally two, but the tanks give him an additional three. And that's three failures and two successes. This is the mountain, so all of these twos will also kill our units. So we are down to one unit. 
And then I'm just going to attack with Hoth. Mm. Can't really use the Dora Railgun in this case because this is not a fortress card. I guess we can gain two supplies, but that's not really useful at this point. So we'll spend one supply and attack with one die. Four. So one Russian is still left alive and he fires back. Six. Um, since we have General Zukov, he's allowed to roll again. And that is not a success. So that's the end of that round, and so when we adjust the time again, it says Soviet Winter Offensive, game over. So we are done with the game, and we just look at our final points. Our final points were 16. We would have needed at least 25 to have a minor victory, so we did not do so great. Um, I don't feel super bad though, because these guys are Nazis after all, so I think in the end we're all winners. So anyway, what do I think about this game? Let's talk about it. So what are my thoughts on this game? As usual, let's start with the build. So first and foremost, the build is pretty easy. It is, after all, really only a deck of cards. I did have some problems lining up the fronts with the backs, particularly because the backs are not really very well defined uh, in where they begin and where they end. And I prefer to cut my cards from the back to try to make them all look the same. And from the front, it can also be a little bit tricky to see where the line begins and where it ends. So some of my cards have white borders where the fronts and the backs were weirdly different sizes or they just didn't line up. But in general, you shouldn't have uh, too hard of a time building this game. So what did I like about this game? I have never really played a proper war game before, but the way that this played, I feel like it kind of would be a bit like this. Uh, I, I like the organization of the units, I like how you have to figure in your supplies, I like how the order of your generals matters. I love how each of the generals has his own ability and you can mix and match to make your own dream team. I, I like how the attacks and counterattacks work, and I like how suspenseful this game can really feel. I also really like how there's different degrees of success, where you can win this game, but just barely you can get a much better victory if you can get more points. Something I thought was extremely clever is how beating one card will unlock more cards. I thought that was pretty neat and really cool. It kind of felt like a video game, honestly. like. Um, a video game with branching paths or something like that. In general, the gameplay is pretty smooth and in my opinion, it seems pretty balanced. So what didn't I like about this game? Well, one thing that was a little bit tricky for me, and this could just be me and my bad memory, is I feel like I sometimes forget the special uh, abilities or the special things that go into each card. A lot of these cards are different or have different effects and have special rules that apply to them, so if you get into kind of a rhythm, uh, you can end up forgetting some of the rules and making a mistake. I think that with enough time I could get used to this, but definitely starting out it was a little tricky for me. So I have complicated feelings about this game, kind of similar to how I felt about Stalemate. Now I guess I just don't generally jive with games that are themed after actual wars that actually happened. And this game is particularly difficult for me because the cards are so heavily based in reality. They all have places, they all have little flavor text, which is wonderful. I love the effort that's gone into the flavor text in the background, but there's the whole historical implications of everything here. And these, the artwork is actually um, photographs with a filter applied over it to make it look a bit more like a drawing, but these are all pictures of actual people. The generals that you play as in this game were actual generals who actually fought in World War II, and I believe that more than one of them was tried at the Nuremberg Trials. 
So we can't really get around the fact that we are playing as Nazis. It gives me a weird feeling when I'm playing this game. Um, everything from the name of this game, which is Conquest, uh, of course makes me think that okay we're going in to conquer Russia, which is I guess totally what we're going to do. Um, but I have a really hard time empathizing with my generals, with my army. I, I have a really hard time really wanting to win this game. Because all of the little red cubes that I keep uh, erasing from the map, I can't help but think of actual Russian soldiers or actual people dying in an actual war. I know this probably isn't going to bother a lot of people. I think a lot of it probably has to do with the fact that I actually live in Germany and that World War II is an extremely sensitive subject and people don't really like to talk about it so much here. Um, war games are not a thing in Germany as far as I can tell. I've never seen like realistic World War I or World War II games that you can like buy the little tanks and the miniatures for at the game shops. It's just not a thing. Uh, the immense amount of national guilt that Germans still feel surrounding the Second World War really should not be underestimated. I think this game would be extremely uncomfortable, if not impossible, for most actual Germans to play. So this game is like Stalemate, I guess, in another way. I, I feel like this is a very good game. I feel like it's been very well designed and that its gameplay is smooth and balanced. It is a great game, but I personally do not like it. I think mechanically it's perfectly fine, and I think I would even have had fun with this game if the theme were just different. But as it is now, this game is just not for me, and that's okay. If you are into war games, I think you'll probably love this game. Like I said, I've never really played war games before, but this feels like a really good place to maybe dip your toes into. Uh, maybe this is just kind of a fun and casual sort of uh, little war game to try out. So if you don't mind taking on the role of Nazi war criminals um, and you can kind of put the theme aside or the theme just, just doesn't bother you, you should have a good time with this game. And if you of course like anything military related, I, I think this game is probably for you. If you like what I do here, please subscribe and consider supporting me on Patreon. There is also the Facebook group for solo adventurers. So until next time, take care of yourself.